This week we're going to teach you about probably the most important tool at your disposal for tweaking the sound of your violin. This tool is definitely the difference between sounding good and sounding bad. Welcome to From Classical to Radical. In order to understand what EQ is and what it does, you have to know two terms, frequency and amplitude. Amplitude is easier to understand. It's not a perfect definition, but for our purposes, we will say that amplitude is loudness. It's how loud uh, a certain sound is. Uh, a low amplitude sound is quiet. A high amplitude sound is loud. Now let's talk frequency. Sound is transmitted in waves through the air. The number of times that a wave, well, waves is called frequency. Uh, the A string on your violin is usually tuned to 440 hertz, and hertz means per second. So the A string on your violin, the fundamental frequency of that, um, pulses at 440 times per second, and that's what A sounds like. When you go up an octave or down an octave, uh, the sound doubles, or the frequency doubles or goes in half. So the open A is 440. First finger on your G string, that's an octave down, that's 220 hertz. Uh, and then third finger on your E string, which is an octave up from open A, that's 880 hertz. So every time we go up an octave, we double the frequency. There's a device called a real-time analyzer, an RTA. And what that does, it generates a plot of frequency on this axis and amplitude on this axis. So if we've got a low frequency sound, say a rumble, or a, or a bass guitar, you're gonna see a big push on the low frequencies on amplitude, and then it'll be lower on the, on the high frequencies. If you've got a cymbal crash or something, it'll be fairly quiet on the low frequencies, and then you see a big push on the higher frequencies. So that's how you sort of interpret what you see with an RTA. This is a pure sine wave at 440 hertz. This is what a sine wave sounds like. Okay, so you can hear that. We're actually going to open up the EQ and we're going to see this is what a sine wave looks like on an RTA. It's just one little spike right here at 400, okay? So I also recorded an open A on my acoustic violin and we will open up an RTA to see what that looks like. Um, let's play that. Now you can see here's the fundamental frequency at 440 hertz, but there are also all these other peaks that come after that. Notice they get closer together as we go up. These are all the harmonics that are generated. When you move a string, that string does move at 440 hertz, but because it's not perfect, it's not mathematically perfect, and it's being continuously drawn by a bow, you also get the higher harmonics. So you get 440 hertz, but you'll also get some stuff at 880. You all get some stuff, you also get some stuff at 1760. You also get some stuff each octave higher than that. And then there are artifacts that come from just the, the sound that the bridge puts into the instrument. The bridge is gonna have a resonant frequency. The violin body is gonna have some resonant frequencies. The other strings are actually vibrating a little bit along. So you're gonna see a lot of different frequencies in there. We'll look at here again. See all these different frequencies that are present in just that one note. We can boost or cut frequencies to modify the sound of the original signal. You may want to spend a little time experimenting on your computer or on, a, uh, on an EQ pedal or something with what boosting or cutting various frequencies sounds like, how that affects a signal. The tricky thing about the English language is that we don't have a lot of words to describe sounds. So we have to use colors and shapes and textures. So it is a little tricky to sort of communicate with each other about different sounds. So just for a starting point, here are some reference points for what various frequencies sound like, okay? The low C on a five string violin is 130 hertz. Your G string is 196 hertz. D string is 293 hertz. Of course, your A string is 440 and your E string is 659 hertz. And of course, you know, as you go up every octave, those frequencies double. 
Now, if we're trying to modify the sound of a signal, and these are rough generalizations because every signal sort of acts a little bit different, but we'll say that that warmth that you're looking for generally lives in the one to 200 hertz range. Fullness, or if there's too much mud, fullness and sort of mud, those will live in that 200 to 500 hertz range. Honk, um, if you've got sort of this honky type sound, that usually is found between 400 hertz and one kilohertz or thousand hertz, and we'll call that 1K. That tinny sound is sort of between one to 2K. Crunch uh, lives in that two to 4K range. Edge is three to 5K. Edge is that sound that makes it feel like somebody's ice picking you in the ear. Um, interestingly enough, the principal component of a baby cry is about 4K. Uh, 4K is pretty well known in the audio engineering world as pretty much the most annoying frequency there is. So uh, yeah, the baby cry is, is specifically tuned to annoy you, uh, which means call you to action. So that's that 4K. If you guys are parents out there, you'll recognize that real well. Definition, sort of like the the, the edges of things where you sort of can feel the edges of the notes or the edges of the words that people are saying. Definition is sort of in the six to 10 kilohertz range. Pierce is in that eight to 12 kilohertz range, which is a little different from, from cut. Cut and pierce are, you know, again, we don't have a lot of sound words, so we're doing our best here. Um, and then air is in that 16 to 20 K range. Human hearing at birth extends from 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz, from 20 to 20,000. Now, if you can understand anything I'm saying in this video, you're an adult, you can't hear 20K anymore. You don't have that, it's gone. Um, and if you've been in screaming loud bands like me for the last 20 plus years, you probably can't hear much above 14 or 15K. Um, as we get older, that high end starts to roll off, which is why sometimes if you're in a club and the band, man, it's just cutting you. It's, it's just harsh, it's brittle, it's cutting. And you look back and you see this old gray haired guy in the sound booth who looks like he's been back there since the 1960s. He's probably high end deaf. Um, his high frequency is all gone and he keeps cranking that high because he's trying to hear that definition. And, uh, and it, it sounds good to him, but it's, it's peeling your scalp back. So as an audio engineer, it's one of those things I have to be aware of getting my hearing tested a lot. And I have to be aware of where the failures are in my own hearing and make sure that I'm mixing in such a way that it's gonna sound good to people who aren't deaf, okay? You can still sense some of those frequencies above the ones that you can hear. We talked to errors in that 16 to 20 K range. Uh, I can't really hear 17, 18, 19 K, but I can sense a difference. If, if they pull everything above 15 K out of a mix, it starts to sound a little lifeless. Um, I can't technically hear any of those frequencies, but they're, they're there and I can sense them enough that I can tell when they're being cut out and you're probably the same way. The other thing to think about when we're talking about EQ is that you can only work with what you have. You can't boost frequencies that aren't there. So if you're playing your E string and you just, you really want some warmth and you're trying to push that 100 uh, hertz range on the EQ, there's no signal there to boost. You can only boost a signal that's there. So um, some of those undertones may, may sneak in a little bit with the E string, but you know, you're trying to push something that really isn't there. So you can, you can only boost frequencies that are there. Also, EQ cannot differentiate between frequencies that are caused by different things, okay? If I cut 7K out of the violin because I'm, I'm trying to lose the sound of the bow hair scraping across the string, I not only lose the bow hair scraping across the string, but I also lose the fourth harmonic above that note um, that I'm trying to play. When you play a note, there's a fundamental frequency and then you see the harmonics above that. That's what gives that note its character and its flavor in your instrument. So when you try to cut a certain frequency because you're trying to get rid of a certain sound, you're not only getting rid of that sound, you're also getting rid of every other sound that is trying to occupy that frequency range. That's a basic introduction on EQ.